Imagine that there are two types of work that you do. There's work that we will call work number one. And this work is work as work that has big potential consequences. If you do this and you do it well, it makes a big difference in your life, your family, and everything else. The other type of work you do is what we call work number two. And this work has no potential consequences. So the first category of work moves you towards your most important goals faster than anything else. This other type of work does not move you towards your goals, and even worse, it moves you away from your goals. Examples of time that you waste doing things of no value. Here's a simple way to become one of the highest paid and most productive people in society. Do only number one tasks. Do only those things that are moving you every day toward the goals that you say you want to achieve. You want to earn more money, be happier, be healthier, move up in your business, have a nice house, set a car, travel, only do those things all day long. If you only do those things all day long, if you only do those things, the things that have great potential consequences, it transforms your life. Here's another discovery. 95 of what you do comes from habit. And if you do something repeatedly over and over again, what do you develop? A new habit. You develop a new habit. You've heard the rule, the 80-20 rule of the Pareto Principle. The top 20 of salespeople make 80 of the sales and the bottom 80 salespeople make 20 of the salespeople make 20 of the sales. Do you know what the difference in the ratio is? The ratio is the difference between 16 to 1. The average income of people in the top 20 is 16 times the average income of the people in the bottom 80. Now, let me ask you a question. Does it mean the people in the top 20 are 16 times better than the people in the bottom 80, 16 times more experienced? Do they work 16 times the number of hours? Do they have 16 times the number of years of education? Are they 16 times more handsome? Are they 16 times anything? You know that it's not humanly possible to be twice as smart as somebody else unless you're looking at very, very unintelligent people and very, very brilliant people. But there's really not humanly possible, on average, for us to even be twice as smart as anybody else. Yet, 20 of these people are making 16 times the average of the rest in our society. It is a lot of controversy, or why should I work so hard for my job? The fact of the matter is that less than five really succeed. That's less than five of the population really succeeding in life. If you have 100 people working today, only one will be wealthy when they retire. Four will be financially independent. Fifteen will have some savings. 80% will be broke and dependent upon charities and pension. Only 1 or 2% of people in each generation really make it in life. And in every single study, those people who make it are those who work hard, 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 hard. And if you think that it's hard to be successful, try being a failure. Try coming to the end of the trail with no money dependent upon pensions, and you don't know what hard is until you try living like that. But if you work hard, the average self, Millionaire in America works 12 to 13 hours a day, works about 60 to 65 hours a day, works about 60 to 65 hours a week. I'll tell you this with regard to hard work. You and our society only work eight hours a day for survival. Everything over eight hours is for success. And if you're only working eight hours a day, you're in trouble. If you're only working eight hours a day, you better have a rich uncle or you better have somebody else who's going to take care of you because eight hours a day only gets you survival in our society. Because it's so competitive that somebody else is working nine. They've got an edge on you. Somebody else is working ten. They've got a bigger edge on you. Every hour or eight that you invest is an investment in your future, is an investment in your future, is an investment in your success. And if you put in the hours over eight, whether it's studying or reading or working, if you put in the hours, it will pay off. And it will pay off in spades. It's like throwing seed in the ground. When you throw a seed in the ground, the plant that comes up is not just one seed. It's hundreds of seeds. There's a crop that you put in, but you must put the seed in the ground first. The market only pays excellent rewards for excellent performance. It pays average rewards for average performance. It pays below. Average rewards for below average performance. And I talk to men and women all over America who are unhappy and they're sad and they don't like their work. 
And you know why? It's because they're not good at what they're doing. So your earning ability is the most powerful and most valuable financial asset you have. And your earning ability, by definition, is your ability to get results that people will pay you for. Now, this doesn't mean that you are not a valuable person. Each human being is of incredible value. But some people's earning ability is much higher than others, and your earning ability is an asset. So it can be either increasing in value, or decreasing in value, or decreasing in value. Now here's what they study. Here's what they found in the studies. The 80-20 rule. They found that the bottom 80% of people, the ones who struggle for money and worry about money all their lives, these people, when they take their first job, will work to a certain level, and then they will level off and never improve for the rest of their lives unless they're forced to. And so, therefore, 10 years after starting work, the average person today is no more productive at getting results than they were after one year. But they find that the people in the top 20% are very different. The people in the bottom 80% increase their income about 2 or 3% per year over the years. In the top 20% increase their income at an average of about 11% per year. If your income goes up 11% per year, you will double your income every six or seven years, and then you will double it again, and then you'll double it again, and then you'll double it again, and soon you'll live in a beautiful house, and you'll drive a nice car, and you'll send your children to private schools, and you'll have a nice bank account, and you'll be happy. But if you don't keep increasing your income, nothing good will happen. Now, what is the difference? The answer is the people in the bottom 80 don't learn anymore after they leave school. But the people in the top 20 are always learning new things. And as a result, they are increasing their earning ability. People in the top 10% in every field think in terms of their hourly rate. How much I earn each hour. Now this change in thinking changes your entire life. I know because I've taught this principle to thousands of people who literally transform their lives and their incomes almost overnight. If you think in terms of how much you earn in a week or a month, well, then you have a natural tendency to waste time during the day. Monday is a slow day. You're recovering from the weekend. Tuesday, you start to work. Wednesday, the week is almost over. Thursday, you start to slow down. And now it's Friday. Who gets anything done on Friday? We'll do it on Monday. And so people's ability to produce drops, drops, and drops. And since 80% of the population thinks like this, if you're not careful, you'll find you are surrounded by people who waste tea time. So when you start thinking in terms of your hourly rate, it transforms your life. Poor folks have poor ways, and it's really hard to get over. Poor folks have poor ways. Always remember that poor folks have poor ways. They think poor, they think cheap, they think saving, they think spending as little as possible, they think a little money they have. But you find that successful people have successful people have successful thinking. They think very, very differently than poor people. And so remember that poor folks have poor ways, but rich folks have rich ways. It's because people who make a lot of money, my friend Jim Ron said, he said the most important part of becoming a millionaire is not money, but it's the person you have to become to become, to become a millionaire. You have to become a totally different person to go from zero to being worth more than a million dollars. But the good news is that if you lost all of your money because of a crash in the economy or something else, you can make it all back again because now you're the kind of person who can make it. Once you become a millionaire in your thinking, then it's only a matter of time before you quickly restore that amount of money in your reality. So the starting point is to change our thinking, which we have said over and over again, and I've written extensively on this. For the path of least resistance is a really big killer. What it is, is the tendency to look for the easy way, the fast way, the cheap way, the cheap way, the method of least effort or least cost to achieve things. And what we have in our society today, which is as a result of several generations of affluence, is we have an enormous number of people who are literally addicted to the shortcut, the easy way, the fast, quick way. There's an old saying with regard to these get rich, quick schemes, when a man with experience meets a man with money, the man with money is going to end up with the experience, and the man with experience will end up with the money. So you'll find that the newspapers and magazines and television are all full of get rich, 
quick schemes because there's always people who think it's possible to get rich quick, get rich easy. All you have to do is find a trick or a gimmick. And there's an enormous number of people who say rich people are just people who are lucky. You know, they just had a gimmick. They just had a trick. Eh. The fact is that the rich have been studied at great length. It takes about 22 years from the time you decide to become a millionaire before you hit a million dollars net worth, including your house. I think it's about 22 years on average, based on the studies of many thousands and tens of thousands of self-made millionaires. People say, wow, that's a long time. If it is, get on with it. So people start at 20. By the age of 42, they're millionaires. By the age of 45, they're dual millionaires. By the age of 55, because as we say, the first million is hard, the second 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 million is inevitable. And so what you do is you have to make the first million. Why is that? Because you have to become a very different, disciplined, higher form of human being to actually make such a contribution that you actually earn and hold on to more than a million dollars. It forces you to become somebody really different than you've ever been before. Financial freedom is a real big issue today. Financial freedom means that you don't worry about money. Worries about money, by the way, are the number one reason for marital breakdown. Worries, disagreements, arguments over money. So if you have problems with money, they affect your relationship. You have problems with your relationship, they affect your health. If they have problems with your health, it affects your peace of mind. And money is a major issue. We've been living through the most affluent country in the most affluent time in all of human history. For the last 50 years, we've grown up in a level of affluence that is unimaginable for 95% of the world. And we have come to believe that this is what we're entitled to. You grow up in America, you're entitled to a fat life. One of the things that is leading to major, major social disruptions is a lot of people are finding that it's not true anymore. It's today, if you want to be financially successful, you're going to have to work very, very hard. You're going to have to get up early and hit it hard and work all day and work into the evening. You're going to have to work six days a week. There's no six, no wealthy people who work five days a week. Zero, nada, none. There's no successful people who work five days a week because if you work five days a week, you actually only work about four. You start late. You leave early and you waste time all day long. Successful people work long days and they work into the weekend. However, they're doing something they enjoy and they're doing something they get tremendous satisfaction from because they're making progress and as a result, it's really not work. You know the old rule, I found something I love to do and I never worked again the rest of my life. I work seven days a week but I never worked a day. And you'll find that when you do that, which you will, before we are finished, when you start to find what it is that you would love to do and put your whole heart into it, you never work again. And you get paid more than you ever dreamed of and you don't even care. You don't even count the money anymore because you're just getting so much satisfaction from using yourself at the very highest level. And so financial freedom, this is something we people have to start thinking about. The worst thing you can do today is to be in debt. As you know, as they say, the debt comes and goes, but the interest payments stay forever. And it's the interest that kills you. It's the constant payment. Look at that. So one of our goals is to achieve financial freedom. And this isn't something that happens by accident. We don't say, well, geez, I got to show up. I'm financially free this morning. No, but what we have to do is we have to sit down and make a plan. And we have to work on it for a long, long time. It's not something you can do once. It's something you need to do throughout your career. And too many people today are deeply in debt. You know, 70% of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck. 70% of Americans, what that means is that they have no money, they have no reserves. The average American family at the age of 40 for the major breadwinner has a total net worth of about $40,000. And that's including the equity in their home. At the age of 60, they have a net worth of about $62,000, an average of about $1,000 a year. Most people without pensions, that's why there's so much political controversy. Without pensions, most people would be destitute. They'd be impoverished because they have nothing. 70% have nothing. Why? It's not because they haven't earned a lot of money. 
You know that if you saved $100 a month for your entire working lifetime, you'd be worth more than a million dollars when you retire. $100 a month. If somebody put a gun to your head, could you save $100 a month? Yes, if your whole future depended upon it, could you just save $100 a month? Well, it does. And people don't even say that. They spend it. They buy stuff they don't need to impress people they don't like. So here's where we start with our entrepreneurs. We say there are four keys. One is to clarify. Clarity is 95% of your success. Be absolutely clear about who you are, what you want, and your goals. Second is to simplify, strip out, and get rid of all the extraneous things in your life that are bogging you down. Number three is to maximize, and maximize is to take your special talents, abilities, and opportunities and really develop them to a high level. Number four is to multiply, and that is to leverage your talents and abilities. So, here's the definition. We say clarify is developing absolute clarity about who you are. One of the things we do is we help people take assessments to determine who they are, what they like to do, what they're supposed to be doing, and we find that if you're in the wrong career for you, you'll never have any excitement about it. You'll never have any desire to get better at it. But if you change and you start doing what is right for you, you suddenly come alive. You become excited about what you're doing. So who you are, what you want, and the best way to achieve it, clarity, clarity, clarity. Second is to simplify. Simplify. Simplify means to delegate, outsource, and eliminate low value, no value tasks and activities in your life. In other words, look at the things you do in your life that contribute very little, very little to your success. But you keep doing them anyway. You'll find that about 80% of your life is trivia. Remember the 80-20 rule? 20% 20 of what you do accounts for 80% of your results. Success, rewards, satisfaction, happiness, joy. Everything is in the top 20%, which means the bottom 80% which means the bottom 80% could be cut out completely and have no negative effect on your life. What do most people spend most of their time on? Bottom 80%. You know, television watching. Since the last time we did this conference, this seminar just a few months ago, at that time it was 150 hours a month for the average adults in America. It's up to 158 hours in less than a year. The average American is watching five and a half to six hours over five hours of television per day. The average non-adult is on social media five hours a day. Television watching, by the way, for young people is dropping dramatically. The networks are going bonkers. But it's older people who are not high techs. They watch television five hours a day. Just imagine if you took two of those hours and you read something worthwhile, you'd be rich in a few years. Television makes you poor. They did an interesting study. They took people from socioeconomic categories. Wall Street Journal. They found uh, as you went down the socioeconomic categories to the poorest of the poor, they had no books in their homes and the biggest televisions they could afford. As you went up to the top and they watched about seven hours of television a day. As they began to go up in terms of income, television watching decreased until they got to the top five or ten percent. These people very seldom watch television. They would pre-record something and watch it at their leisure later on in the evenings or on the weekends very seldom watch television and their homes were full. So if you wanted to get into the top 10%, what you do is you have to do things at the top 10% of people do.